Well, uh, hello there. Um, welcome back to my uh, personal lifestyle channel. For those of you that are visiting for the first time, I am Pastor Michael Nicodemus. I decided to create a uh, personal lifestyle channel so people can see me in action behind the scenes of my ministry. So you know that I'm a, a full-time uh, online uh, pastor at Heart to Heart Refinement School. So on that school um, side, I teach people how to refine their hearts. What does it mean, my friends, to refine your hearts? And what are we refining our hearts from? Well, we need to learn how to refine our hearts from those negative things or those conflicts in our life that could, that could bring us down. Certain things create a problem. And when we're dealing with heart to heart, we're dealing with uh, maybe our spouses, our children. In my situation, I'm dealing with a plumber and electrician. What am I feeling right now? What am I feeling? I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling irritated. What are those surrounding? Those are surrounding uh, frustrations. Those are surrounding uh, some worry. Okay. Let me tell you what's going on and we're going to get started in this little story right after these messages. Come back and join me. All right, friends, here's the deal. I, I live in a trailer house. I bought a trailer house when I uh, um, was injured in a car accident. And I got a settlement. And so uh, I got tired of my rent always going up and up and up and up. So I bought a trailer house. This trailer house is, um, was built in 1999. So it's about 21 years old, 22 years old now. And the problem that I'm having is uh, I have a breaker that uh, my barn... My little uh, storage shed barn is hooked to that, plus my heat tape. Well, right now it is March 25th or so when I'm making this video. And we've had some pretty cold temperatures. And so it's been kicking off a breaker. So there's a short somewhere, okay? There's a short somewhere in the heat tape. There's a problem with the breaker. There's a problem with the barn. The barn has a an upright deep freeze in there that runs on the same thing. So what I've noticed, and I didn't really know this before, is uh, I am hooked to a, uh, right here is a heat tape that's on its own breaker. It Right now it doesn't have anything on it because uh, the electrician came and he put a 15 amp breaker with uh, the heat tape and the barn on it. Well, the barn, has the deep freeze in there that should be on a breaker by itself there's room in this panel for for uh, a single which we got here but we also got room for another double over here so my saying is why did they not put the barn on a separate uh, breaker by itself okay so there's a there's there's a short that's kicking this breaker so this one uh, is not hooked up to anything so uh, it was, and it was kicking the breaker. I'd come in here and kick it on, and a few minutes later, it would kick it off. So I couldn't figure out what was wrong, and so I went out to the barn, and the, the, of course, the deep freeze uh, has a compressor. When the deep freeze kicks on, the heat tape is on. It, 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 it's throwing only 7.84 amps in a 15-amp breaker. So it's not enough to overload the, the breaker. So... If it's not overloading the breaker, what's causing the breaker to trip? Okay, there is a direct short in the system somewhere. So I called an electrician, number one, because it's an electrical problem. Okay, he comes out and he puts his meter on there and uh, he said, well, it's, it's getting good amperage. It's doing it's a good job, but it's kind of old. It's 21 years old. So let's, uh, let's put a new breaker on there and let's put the barn and the uh, um, heat tape on another breaker. Well, he does that. I put this on and within a few minutes, this thing was throwing its, uh, it was tripping it again. Okay. So I paid the man $107, $108 to uh, basically put his meter on here, check it out, put a new breaker on there, still having the same problems. 
So he says, your heat tape is faulty, okay? Heat tape, electrical, electrician, electrical. You would think that they were both related. He says, you need to call a plumber. So I called a plumber, and the plumber comes out, and he pulls the, uh, the cover off of the pit out there where the heat tape comes from underneath the house and down into the pit where the water shuts off at, and there's a water meter down there. The water meter freezes. It's $375 that I have to pay to fix it as the homeowner. And then my water freezes up or I get uh, breaks underneath the house or whatever. And then I have to deal with that. So needless to say, we were still having the problem with the breaker. So I disconnected the deep freeze. And then yesterday there was a major break on it. And uh, it wouldn't even uh, turn on when I tried to reset it. So, so I did some checking around and talked to some friends. And the heat tape should plug into an outlet that, supposedly is underneath my trailer house. So I'm going to have to go and remove the uh, back deck that uh, is over the top of that area, remove the skirting, unplug the heat tape, and see if the breaker is kicking off when I leave it on for a long period of time. I'm having this issue. I don't want to leave the breaker on because that could create a fire in my house. I don't want a fire in my house. So I can't get the electrician to fix it. I can't get the plumber to fix it. So I'm going to have to troubleshoot it. I have been a handyman and been in the, the construction business since 1992. And I'm doing this video in 2021. So I've got over 30 years of uh, home improvement experience. That's why I, uh, I'm also a heart refinement specialist. The two kind of go hand in hand. So let me show you what it looks like outside my back door and everything that I have to do in order to find where that plugs in at so I can unplug the heat tape and then turn this breaker back on, go plug my, my deep freeze in. And if it's the deep freeze that's causing the problem, then the, the problem is going to my barn, not the heat tape. Okay, but I want to figure out how to get the heat tape on its own breaker and the barn on a separate breaker. That's my issue. So when you're frustrated because you're stressed out, you're irritated because things aren't working and people that you're hiring are not fixing it, I'm spending money on something that's still not fixed. It's very irritating. So what do you do? You have to be faithful in what you're doing in order to bear the patience that is Jesus's patience because you connect and tie into him. If I don't know that to be faithful to this task at hand and keep going, my house could catch on fire. I don't want that to happen. I don't want leaks to happen in my house. I don't want that water meter to freeze up. But I also want my barn and my heat tape on two different circuits. Let's see what we can find. I'm going to show you outside what's going on. Well, just to give you an idea of what I'm up against, this is uh, right out my back door. This is the deck that feeds to it. That's the uh, box where the pit, where the heat tape goes down in there. That's a TV and cable and I don't know what else is down there. That's a dryer vent and right about here the bedroom window is right there so right about here is where that panel box is at so what i need to do is i need to get this deck free from this area i'm trying to figure out how to do that without turning it all apart there's a line that comes there I think that's the phone line but I don't have phone in this house so I end up cutting that the heat tape is in this plastic cable right here that was wrapped and it goes underneath the house right there you can see that right there where that feeds in at so I've got to pull this out of there and pull the skirting out that's right behind this bulged area right here. That should get me underneath the panel box and hopefully to where that heat tape plugs in at. So let's figure out how to get this uh, 
um, deck out of here without tearing too much stuff up here. Here we go. Well, the box is removed. The deck's pretty much out of the way. It's pretty much covered underneath there. And that's where our heat tape is coming through at. So I'm going to try to get this panel off and see what's going on underneath the house. Well, here's the dark tunnel that heat tape is wrapped and goes underneath the house. It goes over there up into my furnace room. So I'm going to have to go over there on that side and I'm going to have to take it loose. So I don't see where the heat tape plugs in at. And that's got to be the water access that goes into the hot water heater room. So i got to open that up on that side. I don't see anything here. I don't even see where the uh, electrical wire for the barn comes in at. I don't see that either. So, I have to figure that out. Well, I didn't find the, where the heat tape plugs in from this side of the house to the panel box. That uh, heat tape goes all the way to the fresh water supply. And that's all the way over here. Fresh water connection. So now I got to take that panel out to see if I have any better luck. Let's see what happens. Well, I found my, uh, outlet that turns on my heat tape. I'm also finding a uh, yellow line that they tied into that. That could be what's causing my short right there. That should be in a conduit. It shouldn't be coming out that way. I'm assuming that's going down to the, the barn down there and across. So, unplug the heat tape. I turn the uh, power back on to my barn at 11, 11 a.m. Let's see if it kicks itself off. Well, since uh, the barn is in question, there's the barn line there. This darn thing here is the range thing. That needs to be readdressed. I, that's going to end up shorting out, too, because that skirting pushes it way back in and like that and that's gonna have to be addressed too so that line right there is uh coming from somewhere over there so who knows I had to call another electrician because i don't really know what's wrong i unplug everything from that breaker in there and it still trips itself so Either the breaker's bad or there's something in the system that's causing the problem. So, called another electrician. We'll see what he says. Well, here I am. I'm back into my bedroom. I just wanted to talk to you about this a little bit. As you can see right there, uh, heat tape and barn. That's still tripped. I did make myself a little, um, a little note, as you can tell. So, at 11... 11 I unplugged the heat tape and, and uh, at 11:45 it was still on and that was with the deep freeze going so at 11:45 I plugged the heat tape back in and 5 minutes later it tripped at 11:15 unplug heat tape um breaker on at 12 o'clock and it tripped just like that so it tripped at 11.50 when I plugged the heat tape back in five minutes later. Okay, so I unplugged the heat tape. And the breaker was on at 12 o'clock and tripped again. So at 12.02, with just the freezer plugged into it, it tripped again. So I unplugged uh, the heat tape and I unplugged the freezer. And the breaker tripped at 12.07 and all off and I uh, haven't been able to get it to work since. So, like I said, I had to call the electrician. So, we'll see what he says about this. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't, but I'm being patient. I'm not uh, getting overly stressed out about it. 
It is a fairly warm day, but we got to get this fixed. The heat tape needs to be on, and so does the freezer. Well, welcome back to day four of this electrical dilemma. As you can tell from my previous footage, we found uh, um, a 12-2 wire shoved up underneath a uh, outlet. That's illegal, too. Keep watching and let's see what the electricians, the new electricians, found when we started to investigate. Keep watching. This is the uh, conduit cable these guys are using to put that wire in there. As you can tell, they've got it already trenched and backfilled and goes underneath that... Uh, um, skirt board underneath there and that'll fit a whole lot better and then you guys are going to run that straight down that wall that way right yeah that way so what we did is the cable that was coming out let's see if i've got it so the cable that was coming out was not a cable that was rated to be direct buried and so this is your hot wire that burned up against your ground. It's completely burnt in there? It's or it was just ground and that's what was causing it the short? It was completely burnt up in there. Mm -hmm. That's what's causing it. So, um, I mean, you can see it just pops right out of the sheathing there. So there's right. exposed copper. Now, so, go ahead. What we did is we tore that line out and we ran up into this little barn. We're pulling a new line. Is there conduit just to the bottom of the barn or inside the barn? There's conduit to the bottom, and then it's allowed to free roam inside All right. the barn. Due All to right. Co co now, so if the other electrician would have found that box over there and tested it like you did, he would have found that this side had a break in it, but the, hot, the heat tape would have been okay, right? Yeah, so what I did is I did a continuity check between the different conductors to find... If connectors conductors were touching mm -hmm. and what I found through the investigation was that the side load side from panel to the first point of use was fine and it was from that point of use on that had the issue so we knew there was a break not between the panel and the first point but from the panel to here um, just judging on the rest of the wiring and how it was done it was recommended that we replace it so and uh, these guys are from Titus Electrical Service. I'm not uh, actually putting them in the video. I'm actually got the camera angled down because I think they would prefer not to be uh, seen in the video. But nonetheless, I think they're doing a, a quality great job. And uh, we'll try to take a video of that when they get that secured in there. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you that junction box where also an illegal connection was made. I'm trying to show you how to do it the correct way so we never have this problem again. So, basically, this was the breaker that was in here. This is a Siemens type breaker. Um, this is an Eaton BR style load center here. So, load centers per code are only rated for the breakers which are UL listed to be inside them. So, you're not allowed to have a Siemens style breaker in an Eaton load center. And similarly, you're not allowed to have a square D breaker in a Siemens panel. Um, so what we're doing here is installing the correct breaker on the circuit that we just pulled out to your barn. Um, so while these breakers look very similar, so you can see they look almost identical here. Um, they are not. And as you can see, this one's a little bit longer here. On the underside here, the configuration on the Siemens is a little bit different than on the Eaton BR. Um, the teething is different in here. So when you put a breaker that's incorrect on the bus that's back in there, uh, the bus is not making a proper contact with this breaker. That can cause hot spots and fire and sparking, all kinds of other stuff that we want to avoid. And so when you're installing the breaker, 
you want to ensure that the breaker is rated for the panel that you're installing it in. So this is an Eaton UL listed BR style breaker. It's an updated breaker. These are all Eaton, Cutler Hammer, Eaton BR styles. And these are just the colored breakers as opposed to the standard blacks. It's an older style panel, but newer breakers still accommodate in the, in this panel. So basically what you're saying is you got to use the right breaker for the right box. You have to put the right parts for the equipment that you're using. I mean, you can't just you can't just mix and match and throw random parts in because it, it it just is not it's not safe. It's not code. So uh, tell us, tell my audience again what would have happened if you would have left this breaker in there. So this Siemens breaker in this panel, there's a good likelihood nothing would happen. Uh, however, it's not rated, and I have seen breakers like this in panels like this. And they cause hot spots on the bus. They cause hot spots on the breaker. They can cause uh, breakers to melt. You can cause bus to melt. That can cause your panel to be destroyed. It can. You can at that point. You're going to have to need a new panel. Um, I've seen these cause fires. I've seen these cause all sorts of issues within the panel. So, mm -hmm. anytime that I see an electrician who has installed one of these in the panel. It's a very serious problem. Uh, it gives electricians a bad name when things are done poorly and correctly, cheaply, and quickly. Um, I mean, we're not the cheapest electricians. We're not the most expensive, but everything we do is done to code, done right. So And done for quality. Yes, sir. Thank you for your instructions. No problem. All right, my friends, I'm going to show you everything that went on in this project. Still in the... Uh, mess stage and that'll be cleaned up but we got a new service in here we installed another uh outlet that looks pretty good but what i want to show you is what needs to come apart in order to to uh i guess evaluate the problem of where it was at so if he would have taken all this apart like this and found out where this terminated at down here. This is the end of where the breaker box is. And uh, that's where the, uh, hopefully you can see the plug-in for the uh, heat tape up there. And that's the new circuit that they brought around. So we'll be uh, putting in some new uh, skirting uh, in a few months. But uh, let's walk around here and see what had to go on back here. And you can tell they got their fish tapes here and they had to pull that out. They had to tip that over just kind of like I had it yesterday to be able to assess what was going on. So there's an awful lot that has to be done in order to assess the problem. And if you hire an electrician that does not go to this extent, you probably got the wrong electrician. Well, I just wanted to say uh, we are done with this job. Um, all the worrying and the frustrations, uh, you can't let it get you down, people. So, uh, we have the panel back together. Everything works. Everything's looking good here. So, I'm, I'm happy with it. What I like to do is, uh, take you for a little walk around the house. And, uh, we'll finish this video out in my office because I really want to talk about what, things frustrate us what things cause us to worry and how we can counteract that so my friends i'll be back in just a second with a walk around the house well let's do our walk around after the electricians are all gone let's look inside here to see what was done everything was pretty much put back together we got a new uh, power line coming to here. This is a, a new line right here that feeds into this. And I asked them to put uh, another electrical outlet in there. They did that for me. I appreciate that part of it. This is a... Uh, 
what it looks like after they finished we'll clean all this up and we'll put our grass back together i'll put that uh planter bed back together we're gonna have to put some new uh skirting in here the skirting looks terrible and, and you know it's the, kind of the way it goes the stuff is rotted and that piece was really molded out so when it warms up a little bit we'll put some new uh skirting in some places we walk around over here we still got a lot of snow i think if it wasn't for that snow that probably probably would have never happened and we're pretty much uh wrapped up here they cleaned up their mess i appreciate that so it just takes a little bit of time my friends well let's uh close this video out in my office and my friends in closing out this video what i like to say it's been a tough week it's been a really 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 irritating and as i uh opened up this video and talking about the irritation irritation causes frustration frustration causes us to worry and we need to learn how to cope with the frustration and the worry in our life this whole ordeal could have done a number of things number one my house could have burned down because of what we found if that break would have been underneath my house it could have started a fire big 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 issue number two my heat tape not working could have froze that uh, water meter that would have costed me 375 dollars to replace the water meter but more than that number three it could have froze the pipes underneath my house and it could have created uh, more havoc more expenses more frustration more worry the next thing that i wanted to talk about is um the old style of the way things were done you know I, I can't blame somebody for something that was done in the past prior to me purchasing this house i purchased this house and i took on the uh, responsibility of what was there but the frustration comes in when i uh, hire an electrician to do a job and he does not do it correctly and he does not diagnose it correctly that's a lot of frustration those frustrations lead to worry. So how do we deal with that? How do we deal with those irritations that come up that create frustration? First of all, you have to be patient. You've got to bear patience against that frustration. But you have to have a quality to go with that patience, and that's being faithful. How do I understand and reflect the quality of being faithful in the midst of frustration if i was not faithful to following this through my water lines would have froze my water meter would have froze my house could have burned down the meat and the food in my deep freeze would have went bad so i had to remain faithful to this task even though the first electrician was not faithful to see his job all the way through, okay? Number two, that electrician should have known which breaker went in that box. Was it working? Was it correct? What was causing the breaker to trip in the first place? A bad breaker? We found out different, but we also found out that that breaker that he put in there, that new used breaker, was not the right breaker for what that box required. That could have caused other frustrations, other worry. Okay, so, you know, to deal with our frustrations, we have to bear patience against that to endure it to find the solution and we have to be faithful to finding the solution that first electrician was not faithful to his job therefore he was not faithful to finishing his job but i still paid him my next frustration was when i uh, had a plumber come in because the electrician would not do his job correctly so i had to have a plumber come in and basically all he did was check the heat tape from the house down in the pit and found a simple issue 
That was not the electrical problem to begin with. That brings more frustration. Why did not the first electrician do his job correctly in the first place? So now I have $108 to that electrician and $175 to a plumber that I didn't need to have if the first electrician would have done his job correctly. All of this creates worry, okay? So when we are worried about something, we need to be trustworthy. Trustworthy is a quality that goes with peace. Did you get that? Being trustworthy is a quality that goes against peace. And we need to bear that peace against those things that cause us to worry. Okay, now I'm going to talk about something else here. So you understand that the worry, I need to bear peace against that. And I need to be trustworthy for that. Okay, so the electrician not, did not do his job right. Okay, what happens if I don't bear my peace? Peace is unity and contentment between people. Okay, that's what peace means. That's what I have and that's what I bear against it. But I'll tell you what, without knowing how to use my coping skills against this issue, I could have became a bitter man. Bitterness is what I started to feel First, because the electrician didn't do his job right. Second, because the plumber didn't need to be called in at all, did he? No, no. The plumber really didn't do a job that needed to be done. All he did was check the uh, heat tape from the side of the house down into the pit and found out it was okay. Then he had to rewrap it. So why didn't the electrician open up two panels on the house to figure out the other end of where that uh, breaker um, connection hooked to, right? I could allow that to make me a better person. But because I don't want to be a better person, I have to bear love against the bitterness that comes my way or the bitterness that could happen in my life. And the quality that I need to possess in order to bear love is being a committed person. I'm committed to loving other people in spite of the bitterness that I could have felt. See how this works, my friends? If you do not have the coping skills to be able to deal with life, you're going to be bitter, you're going to worry, you're going to be miserable, and you're going to get frustrated. Those are the things that could have happened in this whole situation. But I'm going to tell you that uh, I had a gentleman that was going to actually uh, give me a quote for installing two ceiling fans. He actually showed up today. He represented the company from the first electrician. We had a good talk. I showed him what was going on. And he says, we will make this right. We'll make this right. So being patient against the frustration Hopefully this guy does come back and he makes it right. What do I expect out of this? Well, the least I expect my $108 back, but what about the $175 that I spent on the plumber that I didn't need to spend? That's close to $300, my friends. But I don't worry about it because I have peace because I trust God to take care of me. That's what I'm trying to show you in this video. How do I deal with the worry and the frustration that comes my way because of the world around me. I hope you got something out of this video and I hope that you remember this. I would urge you to check out my uh, ministry channel on Heart to Heart Refinement School. There you're going to find stage video series that I've done that is going to help you to be able to figure out how to cope with the frustrations, the worry, the bitterness, and the misery that comes at you. It's all about heart refinement, my friends. Thank you for watching this video. May God bless you. May His face shine upon you, and may Jesus always bring you joy. I'll see you soon.